Well, good morning. This here is the 5th of February, 2020. Yesterday was my girlfriend's birthday, Barbara, so wish her a happy birthday in the comments if you'd like. She does watch and uh, the videos and read the comments. Uh, we are in Lansdale, Pennsylvania today. We have a client who has drywall uh, seam separation in his dining room, I believe, and also has woodpecker damage uh, on the dental work of his house, second floor up. And we've been to this client's house uh, at least twice before, and uh, so we appreciate uh, we appreciate him calling on us every time he needs something. Last night, because it was my girlfriend's birthday yesterday, I came to her house. We celebrated her birthday. I spent the night there, so that I'm literally only three miles away from the job site. So that saved me a lot of travel here this morning and it was like kind of a dual purpose trip. So as soon as I roll the intro, we're gonna be on site and I'll get you some shots if I can. So I put tape up there. Kids overfilled the bathtub. It's dry. Let's get another coat on. Well, it's really nice, Mr. Bob, that this customer keeps calling us. He must really like the quality of work he receives. Well, you know, Oscar, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's happy with everything that we've done for him. Uh, this, unfortunately, will be the last time we work for, for this gentleman. His employer has required him to move to New Jersey and not just across the bridge. He's gonna be about an hour and a half, two hours away from here. So they're selling this home and this repair is in preparation for that sale. So we're gonna miss this guy. He's been a really good customer. So Frank, if you're watching, I wish you and your family all the luck in the world in your new location. And I appreciate you calling on me all the times that you have. As you can see, I've made a plastic booth and I have a canvas at the bottom. All the plastic is tucked in under the canvas. I'm also going to use a pan to try to catch any dust that's falling during sanding, but this will protect the furniture. Can you hear the fan blowing? See the plastic moving? That's just to get air moving inside this tented area. It'll help the joint compound dry a little quicker. It's 20 minute joint compound, but it doesn't always dry in 20 minutes. What I'm doing here, just scraping off the ridges from the trowel marks so that when it dries, it's smoother. The 20 minute joint compound comes in a dry powder and you just have to add water. If you add cold water, it will set up slower. If you add hot water, it'll set up quicker. The trick here is not to add too much water. You want this to be maybe like peanut butter in the beginning. The second coat to be more like mayonnaise. A lot of the times this dry powder will resist the water and it'll seem as if it's almost waterproof. The water will flow right over the powder and not make it wet. That just takes a few minutes for the powder to set in and then once you start mixing it after a minute or so, it will it'll start accepting the water. And then after that, it accepts it very quickly. So don't add too much. Add just a little bit at a time. Mix it up until you get it where you want it. You can mix it right in your pan here. If you're going to use a lot of it, 
I don't suggest mixing a lot of the time because you have to mix only what you can use in, in you know, 15, 20 minutes time. And you see how I'm mixing it with my one inch, uh, one inch trowel there? I just mix it in one corner and then I just keep spreading it, grabbing it from the top, from the, you know, from the front, pulling it to the back, bringing it into a pile, mixing it again. I'm trying to get all the lumps out. Looks like cake icing to me. Buttercream icing. Yummy! <laughs> yeah, but you don't want to eat this. Oscar, I'm surprised you're not talking much. You're usually a lot more talkative than this. Well, that's because I'm bored. I've watched your patch drywall so many times. It's the same thing over and over and over again. You put it on, you thin it out, you take it off, you keep doing the same thing. So I'm just kind of sitting here watching you. But it is looking better, Mr. Bob. All right, Oscar. Well, I get that. I, I understand you're a little bored. I, I like to bring you around. You're good company. You ask a lot of good questions most of the time. But I want to tell you, you know, every drywall patch isn't the same. It's not the same regimen every time. Well, sure, I put the compound on, and I sand a little bit, and then I put more on, and I layer it. But every situation's a little bit different. You see that window to my left, that big window in the front of the house? That lets in a lot of light. Well, that light doesn't just come into the room. It actually hits the ceiling. And because of that, it shows every imperfection in the ceiling along that path of light. Now, the closer you are to the window, the easier it's going to be able to see the patch. Fortunately, we're on the other side of the room. But you can see the shadows that my body's creating on the ceiling right here. Those same shadows will be visible if there's a slight little imperfection in the drywall. So I always tell customers, if you're going to patch the ceiling, you should repaint the entire ceiling. This customer is selling his home. He wants to get out of here. He's got like two weeks to move or something. So he just wants to paint the patch. And unfortunately, he don't have the original can of paint where he painted the ceiling. If he did, it'd probably come pretty close. So I'm just using flat white ceiling paint. And I'll spread it out the best I can. But you'll notice, probably at the end of this video, when I show you the final project, when you walk around and look at this, you're going to see where the paint lines interact with the, the paint that's already been there. There's absolutely no way to hide that unless you repaint the whole ceiling. And that overlapping of paint where you see the difference is called flashing. And you'll definitely probably see some flashing in the ceiling, but I'll spread it out the best I, I possibly can. All right, so this is the second coat over the tape, and it'll probably require a third coat. I have the fans continuing to blow on it, so it should be dry in about you know, 20, 25 minutes. Already looking better. What are you doing with that orange thing? Oh, you're catching all of the sanding in that, aren't you? Yeah, Oscar, what I did was I took a five gallon bucket from one of those big box stores and I just cut two inches off the bottom of it. I use it for under sinks when I'm emptying traps to work on the plumbing or underneath of a toilet when I disconnect the supply line. And I also use it for times like this. When I'm sanding, I want the drywall dust to collect in that. So it's more I can throw into the trash instead of trying to pick up from the canvas on the floor. It's a really good way to cut down the amount of cleanup. Mr. Bob, how come you're not moving? <laughs> you're just standing still. Why aren't you moving? Oscar, I am moving. You just can't see me moving because this camera is acting up for this job for some reason. Remember, we lost the first uh, bit of footage where I put the tape on the ceiling. And now it's froze up here. So let's just move on, shall we?
So I guess you didn't need to put another coat on, Mr. Bob. Two was enough? I always sand it down, Oscar, and then evaluate what I'm going to do. I feel it with my hand. If I feel any ridges or feel the transition from the original ceiling to the patch, sometimes I have to sand it more. Sometimes I need to add more compound. Yeah, in this case, two coats was enough. Take notice that my paint tray stays connected to the top of my ladder. To learn how I did this, check out my paint tray hack video. I'm not just painting the patch, I'm spreading the paint job out. And then when I get near the outskirts, I use my roller as it's drying up. Look how nice of a feather job that did. It looks amazing. Yeah, that looks really good, Mr. Bob.